Hello, everybody. My name is Joan Branham, and I teach here at Providence College. As an architectural historian, I'd like to share with you some of the art and architecture of Harkins Hall. Now, today we know Harkins Hall as the iconic building that announces the entrance to the campus of Providence College. It's also the place where graduates get their pictures taken. Uh, here, in fact, is a photo op and cap and gown with my own daughter who graduated from PC in 2019. Harkins Hall is also the administrative hub of the college. It's the site of the offices of the president and provost, student deans, and the admissions office where visitors begin their journey at Providence College. So I'd like to invite you to take a little walk down memory lane with me to see where it all began, uh, to look at some vintage images of Harkins, examine its artwork, and even discover some secret symbols hidden uh, in the art of Harkins Hall. So let's take a look. When Providence College opened its doors in 1919, Harkins Hall was Providence College. And one of the first things we noticed about Harkins Hall, besides the fact that you could park right at the front door back in the day, is that it was built as a curved structure. And we can still see that in its shape today. Why the curve? These early drawings give us a clue as to how the architects initially intended for Harkins to reach out like arms to embrace future buildings. The plan was for the college to add more structures in front of Harkins Hall, and the landscape was cleared for this. But in fact, the expansion of campus ended up developing in the opposite direction behind Harkins Hall, as we know very well today. By the way, that curve of Harkins Hall was imitated by the architects of the newer School of Business building that opened in 2017 in order to echo some of those early architectural forms at Providence College. The architect of Harkins Hall was a Boston-based designer by the name of Matthew Sullivan, and he worked in close collaboration with Charles McGuire, the contractor but it was Reverend Matthew Harkins, the second Bishop of Providence, who was the founder of Providence College. It was his dream to establish an institution of higher education for Catholic youth in the diocese and state of Rhode Island. So he acquired the title to 18 acres of land at the intersection of River Avenue and Eaton Street. And in fact, we read in the June 1919 issue of Dominicana that people of the parish raised a whopping $200,000 for the new college. These funds, together with offerings from the bishop and other gifts, meant that the college began its work in 1917 debt-free, which is an unusual task in any day, much less in the middle of a world war. Limestone was brought in from quarries in Indiana and tapestry brick from local New England brickyards. The dedication ceremony, which we see here, took place in May of 1919, and that fall, Providence College opened its doors to its first class of students. We should note that that first graduating class of 1923 also took their graduation photo on the steps of Harkins Hall. Here is a glimpse of a graduation ceremony from 1939 in this rare archival film footage. My favorite thing about Harkins Hall, of course, is its neo-Gothic art and architecture. It has pointed arches and a sculptural program on the facade, and on the interior, it has lancet windows and uh, vaulted ceilings. When Harkins was initially constructed, empty niches and pedestals were created so that statues could be added later, and this took place mid-century. Crowning the facade of Harkins is a sculpture of the Virgin Mary with arms outstretched and open, welcoming those who approach. 
To the far left, Albert the Great, or Albertus Magnus, the 13th century Dominican from Cologne, holds a book and quill. He was, of course, a scientist, philosopher, theologian, writer, and great proponent of the liberal arts, which are the heart of PC's mission. His student, Thomas Aquinas, the great scholastic thinker and Dominican friar, also appears on the facade. And I hope you remember from your glorious days in Western Civ, discussing his writings on reason and disputed questions. Notice the iconographical symbol of a sunburst depicted on his chest. This signifies radiant light and illumination that Aquinas shed in his role as a teacher, and the symbol is placed significantly over his own heart to convey his quest for truth. To the far right, Catherine of Siena, the medieval mystic from the 14th century, carries lilies and a book signs of her purity and title as doctor of the church. She wears the habit of the Sisters of Penance of the Dominican Third Order and also a crown of thorns, which she chose in the vision over a bejeweled expensive crown in order to unite more fully and experientially with Jesus. And finally, center right over the door of Harkins Hall is St. Dominic, the founder of the Order of Preachers in the 13th century. According to Dominican tradition, the rosary was given to St. Dominic in an apparition by the Virgin Mary, and here the rosary is prominently displayed as his primary attribute. If we look more closely, we also see at his feet a dog with a torch in its mouth. We learn from the earliest narratives connected with Dominic's life that this was a vision his mother had before his birth. The torch, of course, represents the torch of truth, veritas, to illuminate the world. It has been suggested that the dog represents a pun on the Latin word for a Dominican friar, Dominicanus, and Dominicanus, dog of the Lord. We actually see this in other works of art, such as the 14th century fresco in Florence by Andrea da Firenze, where Dominican friars in their black and white robes are paired with black and white dogs as their alter ego symbols. An additional iconographical motif associated with Dominic is the star. Legend says that at Dominic's baptism, his godmother saw a brilliant star gleaming on his forehead, and this symbol appears in multiple places throughout Harkins Hall. Finally, we see some enigmatic sort of mysterious symbols on the facade of Harkins. There are these round circular motifs with a swirling pattern inside. And we also see that same symbol um, in some of the stained glass windows on the interior. Let's remember these because most people have puzzled over them, but when we reach our final destination, I hope we will be able to decode these pictograms. So let's take a look inside. As we enter Harkins Hall, we find ourselves under a vaulted ceiling with acoustical stone tiles. This rotunda was explicitly designed for rich sound reverberation, and the beautiful voices of student a cappella groups can often be heard in this space. To the left of the entrance, a bronze bust of Bishop Harkins recalls the college's founder and the building's namesake. One of my favorite art pieces is a mural from 1936 uh, by the first artist in residence at Providence College, Father Joseph John Sullivan. In this work entitled Tree of Truth, a Dominican friar greets a Providence College student receiving his diploma. Multiple paths behind the tree await the graduate, representing a life full of choices and decision-making that require the knowledge and critical skills a liberal arts education provides. 
As we walk under the mural, we enter the second building phase of Harkins Hall, added by architect John Donahue in the late 1920s. At this point, Harkins Hall comprised, among other things, laboratories for chemistry, physics, and biology, an art studio and bookstore, an astronomical observatory and chapel, an assembly hall and cafeteria, library, and gymnasium. One can still see traces of the original wood panels that were located in the balcony of the basketball court and still exist today in the Barnini Room where the Board of Trustees meet under historic portraits of Providence College presidents. Finally, as we move to the second floor of the rotunda, we encounter more artwork as well as more of those symbols that we had seen before. In the same year Father Sullivan painted Tree of Truth, he also created panels of the four evangelists. Stained glass lancet windows allow colorful light to stream into the rotunda, and the original 1917 chandelier exhibits iconographically rich symbols, such as the torch, the Veritas motto of truth, and the star we saw from the story of Dominic's life. But there's more. If we look closely at the very chain supporting the Veritas torch, we discover the same circular symbol we saw on the facade of Harkins and in the windows. To decode this motif, I reached out to my friend Mark Raposa in Capital Projects and Facilities, and he shared with me an original letter uh, written by the architect Matthew Sullivan. And in this document, the architect is trying to figure out some sort of symbol that is fitting for the Dominican order. And he takes the OP of Order of Preachers, and he begins to work it into a design concept. The architect writes that the P also denotes providence, and in a number of iterations, he plays with the letter, turns it upside down, merging forms, and ultimately joins it with the letter O, thus producing an entirely unique symbol that appears again and again throughout the art and architecture of Harkins Hall. So there you have it, where it all started at Providence College. Uh, there's actually so much more to see. So next time you're on campus, I hope you will pause and take a look at the beautiful architecture of Harkins Hall, one of the fine examples of neo-Gothic architecture in New England. Thank you and take care. <music>